Moments away from the start of USC and Penn State. Jam-packed crowd at Rec Hall at Penn State University. They are ready to see their Nittany Lions, and there is the Nittany Lion, ready to go here for the second night on opening weekend of Big Ten women's volleyball. The USC Trojans ranked second in the nation. Here's their starting lineup. Last night they were led by a couple of seniors as Alex Jupiter at 22 kills and number eight Lauren Williams also added 16. Kendall Bateman runs the offense for Southern California. And for Penn State, they'll be in the home whites with the blue trim. Their starting lineup, McClendon with 15 kills last night. Ariel Scott came through with 14. Kristen Carpenter will be in the libero position tonight, and Micah Hancock will set for Russ Rose. That's a different position for Carpenter. As we all know, she had a great season last year as the setter. But one of the huge concerns for Russ Rose after watching last night's match is the backcourt defense and ball control. So hopefully Carpenter can have a positive impact on her team, at least tonight, wearing the libero shirt. Russ Rose is in his 33rd season as Penn State's head coach. 1,033 wins, and last night was only his 165th loss. He hasn't had less than 22 wins in a season at Penn State, and of course has coached the last four national champions. Mick Haley's in his 11th year as head coach at USC. 256 wins, 59 losses, along with his years at Kellogg Community College and Texas, 1,029 wins. So two veteran coaches matching wits here tonight. Should be something special. I think it will be. I think it'll be a chess match on lineups and how to match up players. So we'll see how it all pans out. There's the first hit of the night from Jupiter, handled by Penn State. And the Nittany Lions get the first point with Deja McClendon. Well, nice dig in the backcourt. If you're Russ Rose, again, that was a concern. So he's got to be pleased with people hustling in the backcourt on that first point and then turning around and transitioning away from that and getting a kill. Again, Jupiter, and she's blocked that time. Katie Kamis for Penn State. Off to a nice start here. We're seeing number seven, Nia Grant, in the lineup. You know, the concern is that she is tall and tiny, but she looks strong at the net with that block. Katie Kavis, the co-captain. 2-0 Penn State. And USC gets his first score of the evening. And the block for Penn State got a little tripped up. I think Deja kind of bumped into Nia Grant there in the middle. Look at this block. Nice touch. You want to slow the ball down. You don't necessarily have to roof every ball. But you certainly have to kill the ball if you're Deja McClendon because that is your job out on the court. She did a nice cross-court hit there. Rhea Russ is a freshman. She'll put it in play for USC. McClendon. Touch. Penn State point. Well, you can just tell that the crowd has tremendous energy right from the start. They are saying, we are behind you. Just go and do your stuff and we'll cheer you on. We'll help you out with the little points here if we can. You know, for USC, Bria Russ, and we saw her serving. She's uh, new in the lineup tonight. We didn't see her last night, so we'll see what she can do for USC. McClendon serves for the Nittany Lions. And a block again. That time to Ariel Scott. The start for Penn State. And it's nice to see these girls with smiles on their faces. I was a little concerned. Wondering how they would rebound while well, they seem to be happy to be out there and happy to compete. 4 1 Penn State. Jupiter handled again. Catch, roll, hit, McClendon. Well, any questions on how Penn State was going to come out have been answered already. I know. I, uh, I'm so tickled to see this. Again, I think Russ Rose does a good job of coaching. I think he knows the psyche of his players, and I don't know that it was in his best interest to rip them apart. I think what was important to him is to find some people to insert in the lineup that were going to be leaders, and I think Deja McClendon right now is holding her own and 
definitely came out strong here in the first set and got her share of kills and is doing a good job in the backcourt. Yeah. Serve receiving defense. USC's second point of the evening. And a big swing from Kavis. Well, I knew Carpenter had to be out on the court somewhere because she's such a positive person. And she showed good passing right there. This kid has not passed balls for a whole year. And so just a great athlete that is able to step into that role. It would be nice if she got, <laughs> got an ace too, but you know, just to be able to get in that server seat pattern and, and, and pass with some confidence is a huge testimony to her abilities. Russ Rose after the loss last night. I mean, his post-game comments kind of gave you an idea of what things might have been like today. He said, you can't be a baby when you lose after the success we've had. So you take the loss, you get back to work, and here you go. Yeah, if there's one thing about Russ that I enjoy is his honesty with his comments. I don't think he sugarcoats anything. I don't think he's going to be pleased with how competitive his team has turned out to be here in the first set, up ahead here in the first set, 7-3. to three. There's Katie Slay, a 6-6 six, six sophomore, making her first kill of the night. Let's talk a little bit about Micah Hancock with a nice jump set. Just so composed as a setter. I like how she gets that ball way above her forehead on the set. Now that time, Dominic Gonzalez had a little trouble handling it. So it'll be a point for USC 7-6. There's Katie Slay, Raleigh, North Carolina, her hometown. And a Schreer back to serve for USC as the Trojans now within three first set. USC a six-time NCAA national champion. Penn State now with five national titles, including the last four straight. The time USC blocks Scott again. Short Sarah Shaw had a little trouble getting it back, and it's a point for the Nittany Lions. All right, so Scott seems to be swinging on the left side. And we're seeing Mia Grant, a little bit of what she can do so far. I think she's done a good job touching the ball on the block. Disciplined blocks, good touches on the ball that are slowing the ball down and allowing the backcourt to play defense out of that. So, so far, so good for Penn State. Ariel Scott, 20 matches last season, two starts. She will be a much bigger factor for the Nittany Lions this year. And a service ace again. That time from Ali Longo. And an error there by Longo. She's got to go in the match and aggressively serve the ball in. That's your job when you get subbed in as a DS. Not only do you have to dig balls, but you've got to let the bullets fly on serve. What a hit there by Micah Hancock. Well, they kind of backed off a little and she found the open space. Yeah, this kid's the real deal. I'm telling you what, anybody as a freshman that walks in there, is able to take the second ball and rip it cross court. Boy, that's a player. So now we'll see what else she can do. Can she make adjustments offensively, set her go-to hitters, and lead the charge here for the Nittany Lions? Five different Penn State players have registered kills already. It's 9-5. Slay will set McClendon this time. She fumbled her steps a little and couldn't get much on it. There's a great block at the Penn State net. Longest point of the match so far, McClendon. And Jupiter dug that one out. McClendon. It's a serious shot, nice angle. Again, that ball set outside the antenna. She's turning her body, she's facing cross court, drops her thumb, and that's a serious angle. Everybody's excited about her performance so far in the first set. Deja McClendon with her fourth kill of the match already, and Penn State jumping in front, first set, 10-5. All right, let's take a look at this big swing by McClendon here. Again, Jupiter getting it done in the backcourt. And then a free ball sent over. So we call this being in system. And boy, with Penn State's in system, they look good. Serious sharp angle again. McClendon having a good range of shots there. We've seen her rip line before and that time cross court. And she's got good vision. She sees what the block is. She sees where the block is. 
and then chooses her shot accordingly. We're still early in the first set, but Penn State is hitting at 538, USC hitting at zero. 10-5, Penn State. Alex Jupiter. Jupiter hitting out of the backcourt that time, the two-time All-American standout for USC. She's trying to get her troops fired up. 532 kills last year, 16 double-doubles, and one match against Arizona State. 31 kills, 20 digs in a four-set match. That time they stop McClendon, and USC will get the point. Good hustle on Penn State's side of the net. Again, if you set McClendon too often, it makes it very easy for USC. So, again, you got to get some other people involved in the offense and keep that middle blocker at home for a while. Open things up. There you go. Ariel Scott. Oh, check that. Nia Grant. Excuse me, number seven. Well, the thing about Grant and Scott is they're built very similar. Scott's got a year of being in the weight room, so she's a little bit broader yep. shoulder, but I'm telling you what, these kids are built to play this sport. They're long and lean. Mm -hmm. Service ace. Micah Hancock. Oh, that was in, but barely. Great yeah. shot. I think what Russ Rose likes about this kid is She's only going to keep getting better, but she's so aggressive and so competitive. Another one. Consecutive aces. Oh, she is charged up, and why not? Well, one thing that Penn State's done, at least early, you mentioned last night against in that match against Oregon, the crowd was very into it early, but then as Oregon controlled the match, it kind of took the home crowd out. Right. Not so the case tonight, at least not yet. Yeah, it's interesting because, like I said, I was a little concerned with what the morale would be like, and these kids just rebounded. Hey, it's a loss. It seems to me like they are back in this for the fight, and they know it's a long season. Okay, it's a loss. Maybe they didn't play quite spectacular volleyball. But they certainly are good enough to play better than they played last night, and they're showing it tonight. The Penn State run continues, 14-7. Four straight for the Nittany Lions. USC a little off their game here. Their first pass kind of going off the court. And this communication here. We didn't see a lot of that last night. So I think as USC settles in, uh, we'll see more of what they're capable of doing. Oh, difficult serve to handle from Hancock. That time USC does get it in play. 14-8. And that was Jupiter on the left side. Again, when you get a pass up, setter, or USC, Kendall Bateman, the All-American, she puts up exactly what Jupiter needs. It seems to be the right height, right distance every time she touches the ball. Kendall Bateman has a chance to become USC's all-time assist leader. She needs just over 1,100 this year. That's are pretty good. She might do that. Another point for the Trojans. There's Alex Jupiter. Yep. And service C for Penn State looking pretty good right now. Longo taking her share of passes here for her team. You see Bateman, the setter for USC. Clendon. And that'll go to the Trojans again. 15 9. She's talking to her setter. Micah, now I want the ball. Give it to me now. <laughs> Don't all hitters say that, though, the ball? <laughs> the good ones do, the yes. The good ones do. Here she is. Uh, yeah. Never made it over. Clendon with a hitting error, 15-10. Hey, it'll... 14-11, uh, excuse me. 14-11 to score. There we go. I'm interested to see what the other kids can do offensively. I know McClendon has to get more sets than the other players on the court because she is the top hitter, but it would be very interesting to see some of these freshman hitters that Russ Rose has inserted in the lineup, what they're capable of doing. Penn State has had so many great Amer All-Americans through the years. McClendon the latest. Scott with a pretty good attempt there, but denied by USC. Now the Trojans have to try and dig it out, and they do. Carpenter. Cavus. 
USC will get the point as Cab has missed it. Now you see the strategy Penn State's having to try to slow down Jupiter. A triple block, great coverage, great save by USC. And this is where you've got to score, but Cabas wasn't able to score on that play. Lucky for Penn State that USC missed that serve and gave him one. Yep, Bria Russ leaving the lineup for the women and ladies of Troy. Here now comes Penn State with a 15-12 lead. It seems like USC's pretty tall. They have 10 players on their roster, 6-2 or taller. We're going to triple block here again. And that's off Carpenter. Alex Jupiter gets credit for another kill. So you got Nia Grand in the middle. I'm trying to give people at home the vantage point of who's playing front row because it changed since yeah. last night. You got Nia Grant and Scott. Jupiter Habis. with three kills. That attempt from Scott. Missed that one, and it's 15. 14. Ariel Scott, just a sophomore. She's 6'4". Point Penn State. Again, communication is the key to this sport. And there you see on server scene, you've got to call it in or out for your teammate. Oftentimes, if it's very close, the passer's going to try to pass the ball. And you really rely heavily on your teammate to help you figure out if that ball's in or out. Jupiter. Missed it. Oh, yeah. to the, to, okay, we're going to have a timeout. Second time off for USC, and they trail Penn State 17 14. Well, we'll be back with more action. The Penn State leading 17 14. You see Katie Slay is rotated in the front row. She was dominating last night, blocking. We'll see if she can get some blocks for her team tonight. Back set to Alex Jupiter. She was born in. Charenton Le Pont, France, moved to the United States as a freshman in high school, then began playing beach volleyball. And he's now one of the best players in the nation. That's right. Last night, 22 kills against Minnesota. She had a spectacular showing. Slay just kind of ran out of room there. Couldn't get anything on it. 17 16. There's USC's other All American, Lauren Williams, number eight. Seventh of the nation in hitting percentage last year, Lauren Williams at 417. Scott blocked. And it's tied at 17. Yeah, Katie Fuller put a stop on that hit for USC, the 6 2 opposite hitter from California. She had a, a spectacular match last yeah. night, too. Offensively, she was hot. She's a junior, Katie Fuller. A young Trojan team as well. Ten of the 15 players are freshmen or sophomores. But they have the veterans, Jupiter, Williams, Fuller. Listen to that crowd. Man, man. They got even louder. That was Fuller. And now USC has taken the lead. You know, I think Russ Rose is going to be somewhat patient with Carpenter. She makes her share of digging errors in the backcourt. He'll give her maybe two or three more chances back there because she was a setter last year, so it's going to take her a while to get in rhythm defensively, but... Russ Rose has a bunch of other kids that can play that role, and he switched shirts yesterday. We'll see what he decides to do tonight with that libero shirt. Last night, Russ Rose, after the defeat at the hands of Oregon, what we're missing is what we're missing. We're missing the ability to play defense in the back row, and we're missing the ability to terminate when we get ourselves in a situation where the ball was there. So, yep. again, it's... It, it,
it's hard to say it, but a learning experience for Penn State. Yeah, absolutely. I think last year, you know, they had some kids that just got it done in those yeah. situations. They had two great defensive players. You know, Dorico stands out in my mind as one of the best liberos in the nation. And then Brown and Wilson yeah. really finished the job offensively. So even though some of the hitters are back this year and Scott and McClendon, they weren't always asked to finish it. Yeah. Brown finished a lot of those long rallies for the team. Um, and Russ Rose has another interesting comment. He says, last year they may not have been the best team, mm -hmm. but they were the best team at the end. Yes. And he rested some key players at the end because he was setting up for a national championship run not to keep any winning streaks alive. Yeah. Well, maybe, well, he certainly hopes that that's the makeup of this team as well this year. Yeah. Again, I, I said last night, I'll say it again, it's not how good you are in August, it's yeah. how good you are in December. And he just wants to see who's going to compete, who's going to go after the ball. And again, defensively, there wasn't enough positive moves to the ball. So that was an area of concern. Right now, serve receive has to look better if they want to get out of this rotation. Four straight points by USC, has the Trojans in front in set one. Natalie Hagland is the libero for USC. That hit a little long, point USC. So after a sparkling start by the Nittany Lions, they've now fallen behind 19-17. And another Trojan point. Yeah, the Trojans right now are doing a good job of picking off people on serve receive. They definitely have a target. They're not just serving to that target. They're making that target move. And right now, Scott's having a hard time handling that ball. Lauren Williams with the last kill for USC. Now leading by three. There's Jupiter serve. Boy, look at the dip on that thing. Now it's Penn State on the defensive. Far another kill. Now Katie Slade getting caught kind of hopping around in the blocking position. She's hopping to her right, and then the ball gets set to the right side, which means she's got to move to her left there. You see, she's in no position to help with the block, and Katie Fuller is such a strong player. You know, they've got great hitters, and that's what makes it hard for Katie Slay. You know, maybe she was told to cheat to that left side, but then when you've got this huge right side hitter, boy, you've got a yeah. tough job if you're Katie Slay. Katie Fuller, number 22, a high school teammate of Natalie Hagelin, the libero for USC. The Trojans have suddenly scored seven straight points. It was 17-14. It's now 21-17. And what you has, USC has done is eliminated some of the silly errors and the ball control errors on their side of the net, so they're putting a lot of pressure on Penn State, forcing them to respond. Definitely making Penn State earn their points instead of just giving them their points. This fall, BTN will launch BTN Live Big, our initiative to recognize and inspire the community service efforts of Big Ten fans. To live big is to find a cause that you're passionate about and to do something about it. Beginning on October 3rd, BTN will prepare Big Ten Live Big, our new weekly series hosted by the University of Michigan's Dahani Jones. Act, serve, inspire. Alex Jupiter, four kills. Deja McClendon, four kills. Stars of the game living up to their pre-match billing. Boy, look at those jerseys. They are yeah. wet. It's got to be hot in that place. It is jam-packed. First set, and these girls look like they just stepped out of the shower. They're yeah. soaked. And it's only the first set. Out. A service error, but nearly a service ace. Nick Haley, the head coach at USC, he was a player back in the day, a setter at Ball State in the early 60s. Got his master's degree from Southern Illinois. And service error, Penn State. That was Dominique Gonzalez. Critical error, giving a big point to USC again of forced error there. 22-18, USC three points away from the first set. A 
They'll try Scott. They'll try Scott again. And Slay can't quite finish it. Hancock. That was stopped by Jupiter, but it stayed on the USC side. Point. Nittany Lions. This is the second time Hancock's done that. And look at her. She is talking to Slay, and she's telling her, you got to get up. Get back on, off the net on transition. Boy, she is deceptive. And, you know, USC has got to stay with her. That left side blocker has got to move to their right a little bit to take that shot. And you see her eyes. She's so expressive with her Absolutely. eyes. She opens them wide up. And I'll tell you what. She I'm, is hungry. Hungry to win. You get 22-19, that violation USC. 22-20. Hancock, McClendon. blast through again you don't have to block every ball after she gets a touch on it slows the ball down it's easier for the backcourt to dig and then she delivers a perfect set nice in tempo and rhythm to the outside McClendon's fifth kill tonight 22 21 play block right back you know, I'd like to see Slay going behind the setter and transition a little bit more. Try and get Schreyer to go with her. And that would open things up on the outside. Right now she's staying in front, making it pretty easy for this huge USC block. Well, and that's a pretty straightforward putback by Schreyer. Hannah Schreyer, the 6'3 middle blocker. She's a freshman, Arcadia, California. Set point, USC. USC, give them credit. They didn't start the set off strong, but boy, they are yeah. consistent. They're showing why they're number two in the nation. Got some strong hitters, and here we see Fuller on the service line. Hancock, McClendon blocked, and USC takes the first set. 25 21. That's a huge block for the freshman Schreyer. She released quickly. Boy, she's more than just adequate out there. She's getting the job done. Getting that big point, the final point to end the set. Schreyer gives USC its fifth block of the first set, and it is the set point. Now, Schreyer took off early, got there, finished it. This is going to be quite a night. One set is complete. And number two, USC leads number one, Penn State, 25-21. But we have a long way to go from University Park. If you love women's volleyball, you're going to love this match. Set one goes to USC, 25-21. Let's take another look at the point that gave the Trojans the set. Well, they release early. There you see Schreyer taken off. They have been dominating the net. Penn State hitting negative 0.29. And it's not necessarily because the passing or the serve receives not there. I, I feel like their ball control is decent. I think they're getting worked over at the net. I think right now the blocking from Schreyer is standing out in my mind. And also I think Penn State's offense is a little too predictable. We haven't seen enough action from the middle hitters. They've got to get involved in the offense. They're making it way too easy for USC's block. USC's block is too big. You're not going to be able to always hit around it. You can't expect your outside hitters to score without making the blockers move. You've got to try to get them to go in the opposite direction. So I think Slay needs to get involved in the offense. And I think if Nia Grant is out there in the front row, that she has got to get her share of sets just to keep the middle blocker of USC home for a little bit. Make her make some decisions. Don't just take off. There's the comparison. McClendon with five kills. Jupiter four. As USC takes the first set, 25-21 in University Park. We're having just a little bit of a issue with our...
pictures. We hope you'll bear with us and we appreciate your patience. We're just about set to begin the second set. USC leading one set to none. As we wrap up the first weekend of play in women's volleyball here in the Big Ten, the 29th season of Big Ten Conference Volleyball. And Deja McClendon starts off the second set with the kill. You know, even that is good because they're moving her inside the court a little bit. So it's not the same look time and time again where she's just hitting the ball from the pin there. If they can pass the ball and stay in system, I think they need to move Deja around a little bit. I think she's certainly athletic enough to do that. But again, you got to have some contribution from your middles in order to set those plays up. Another serve that misses the mark. This time it's Penn State with the error, 1-1. One, one. McClendon gets another attempt. And again. Two one Nittany Lions second set. McClendon, the ABCA Division I National Freshman of the Year last year, seven kills in tonight's match. Named the most outstanding player in the NCAA championship. Service ace. USC's back line watched it fall in. I am a big fan of the deep floater serve. If you can serve the ball that deep, forcing the passers to move back or play it above their head, I think those are often the most difficult serves to pass. And Alex Jupiter answers for the Trojans. Jupiter just really <laughs> exploding up, hitting the ball at the high point. Again, you don't necessarily have to stop her hits. You just got to slow them down. Just get a good touch on the ball. It's five kills for Jupiter now. And State with the lead in the second set. And a great touch there by Lauren Williams. Yeah, you can't give USC the opportunity to score. And Cabas on the right side with just too easy of a hit. And USC is a good team, so they'll be able to dig those easy balls up. And then they've got... There's stud Lauren Williams there in the middle. And that's a service error by USC. Lauren Williams. Serving has not been terribly scintillating in either of our matches tonight. But Minnesota and Oregon and now Penn State, USC. And that trend continues there. 4-4. Now Carpenter just Four coming off an error there, still talking to her team. She's struggling a little bit probably with what's happening here on the court. I know she wishes she could change things. She's got a great pass there. That's a way to contribute. Katie Slay. Starting to make her mark. Here's Kristen Carpenter. Now Dominique Gonzalez is back to serve again. She's an aggressive server. A pretty darn good back row player too. So she can change momentum out there. If she can get a couple good digs. That's Lauren Williams. I checked that. I think that was Kirby Burnham on the outside. The blonde hair ponytails always seem to look the same, don't they? <laughs> they sure do. <laughs> Kirby Burnham is a 6'2 sophomore. She's from Newport Beach, California. 5-5 five, five our score, second set. Slay. Didn't get enough on him. Not USC. enough elevation. Point USC. Maybe Slay. As Rose says, she's improved offensively in the last year, but that time a little tough luck on the hit. Scott, USC, Ariel Panthers. Ariel Scott gets the point. And then wipe off some perspiration again. A very warm evening inside Rec Hall. That's right. Now Ariel Scott, the ability to move around all three positions on the court. She was right side, and now she's playing primarily on the left side. She's listed as a middle. 
And so I know that this kid is gifted enough athletically to do whatever Russ Rose asks her to do. And right now he's begging her to get kills when she's in the front <laughs> row. Pretty simple. That's Burnham again. You know, an interesting story about Burnham. Nick Haley said last year she had to, in practice, you know, set a little bit. And what she did was she would come into practice with her hair done like the setter that they would be playing that weekend. And Mick Haley oh. had no idea, and the team would just crack up. <laughs> and then they finally yes. let him in on the joke that she was not only pretending to set up the same offense, but do her hair and act like the setter that they would be playing. How so good that? sense of humor. It's always nice to have somebody to lighten up the mood in practice. You learn a lot on all those years. Clendon. And that's a good point for Deja McClendon. Eight seven. Yep, sometimes you've got to better the ball, and that's what she did. It wasn't a perfectly set up play, but she manages to see that there is an opening. Oh my. She's able to tip the ball to the opening. But that's a very disappointing serve from Slay, and I think Russ is going to talk to her a little bit about that. She's got to be able to go back there and do more than just chunk the ball in the middle of the net. Any explanation for all these service errors? Well, I really think service errors are mental errors. I think if you're uh, good enough to play D1 volleyball, you should be able to get on the end line and, and serve a pretty good serve in. And I don't know what the problem is, but it just seems like that's a given. You have to be able to serve the ball in and relatively tough one and be able to place it wherever the coach says. A point for Deja McClendon. Eight. And State serving down one. Well, that, that might have been a service error, but Fuller got in the way. Well, I was going to be close. Yeah, that's an aggressive serve. It's a great serve. That jump serve, a lot of top spin. Again, it caught Fuller off guard, and that's exactly what Penn State needs some aggressive people going after it on the end line. Now you have to make that decision in a split second. It's coming at you with dip on it. Great speed, great pace. That time it worked out for Penn State. And it's Hancock again. She's got the potential wow. to be such a leader out there. And that's Katie Cavus for Penn State. Yep, again, the right side attacker for Penn State. Cabas needs to deliver on some kills again so that the blockers for USC are challenged. That time she came through with a kill, and that's exactly what her team needed from her. Cabas is Penn State's only out, uh, senior outside hitter. 99 kills last year. And that's going to be a point for Penn State. Or excuse me, a point for USC to tie it at 10. You know, sometimes outside hitters are so focused on terminating the ball, they got to be able to play disciplined defense. When the other left side hitter is hitting, you got to come off the net. You got to go from that high blocking posture to low. You go from high to low, and you got to be disciplined, get down. Don't think about someone else digging the ball. You got to dig and then shuffle to the outside to get the set. This is the first meeting between Penn State and USC in women's volleyball since 2005. Penn State won that one 3 1 at the Hawaiian Airlines Classic. Tonight it's USC with a one set advantage. All even second set. McClendon did well to get it across. Nice save there by Kristen Carpenter for Penn State. Here comes Jupiter. That's good. And a two-time All-American delivering for her team. That was the best rally I've seen so far tonight. Good defensive plays on both sides of the net. But then it's Jupiter there, and Carpenter just maybe sucked in the court a little bit. Again, it's hard to read Jupiter. She's got a bunch of different shots, but you've got to really know what the block is doing before you line up defensively. Each set is completely different. Each play is different, so you got to read what the block is giving the outside hitter. Jupiter matched her number with her seventh kill of the evening, but then McClendon answered that with her tenth kill tonight <laughs> for Penn State. 
Look at those numbers. Wow. Yeah. Two great athletes on both sides of the net. Sure are. Well, that time USC had a little difficulty, and Penn State goes in front again, 12-11. Could have been some of that early season stuff. But trying to learn each other's positions. Kendall Bateman gets ready to receive the serve. Quick set and finish by Lauren Williams. That's a great set by Kendall Bateman. She's off the net and she pumps the ball to number eight, Lauren Williams, the All-American. So a very deceptive set, yet being off balance, she's still able to get it right in the sweet spot there. Perfect timing. And you could clearly see that Penn State's block was not loaded and ready to go up on that hit. Bateman up to 15 assists tonight. And that'll be a point for USC and the Trojans. Now take the lead in the second set, 13-12. Yeah, Scott is still back there in serve-receive. I wonder if she'll get pulled up and maybe pass with two. That's always an option. Hancock, set Grant. Now the USC counter. And that's out. McClendon missed it, and USC will take a two-point lead. Well, Carpenter adjusted defensively, got a great dig, but then it was McClendon that couldn't finish it off. It just seems like in plays, you know, obviously all the three contacts need to be in sync, and it seems like Penn State's got one or the other at times. And Scott really struggling right now on the outside again. I think she's back in serve receive, and it would be interesting to see if Penn State would pass with two and not let her worry about having to pass the ball. Just worry about one thing, and that's swinging on the outside. USC trying to take the home crowd out of it again. They lead a set, and they're leading 15-12 in the second. So we continue from University Park, Pennsylvania. The difference is that USC has a bunch of different options to go to. We're seeing the set distribution going to various people. Of course, there's strong hitters, Jupiter, but we're seeing other people contribute. We had Williams in the middle, and Bateman has a lot of options. And right now, Penn State's hitting percentage is pretty bad. They're not in double digits. And service error, USC. Now the Trojans are hitting 667 in the second set. You still lead it by two. At the net, that'll be Penn State's point. Katie Slay was there. Katie Slay led Penn State in the national championship match with seven blocks against Cal. There you see Mick Haley, the veteran coach. Won a national championship at Texas in 1988. Had 522 wins at Texas. <laughs> that worked out pretty well for Penn State. I don't know if that was the plan, but it worked out pretty well. Uh, the plan's always to just smack it hard and <laughs> not let it go off your fingertips. But nonetheless, I think that these two will get better if, you know, Russ Rose decides that Micah Hancock is going to be the setter. I think that she'll connect better with Slay as the season goes on. But Slay is powerful. You've got to get the ball to her. Again, there's such a timing factor with that quick attack. That's a USC hit for Kirby Burnham. She's had a few of those already tonight. Yeah, we didn't see much of her last night. But I'm telling you what, that's the interesting no. thing about this USC lineup. Tons of options. Some fantastic outside hitters bunch of good ones on the bench too that's the fourth kill for burnham tonight last night she didn't have any and the trojans now have the advantage in the second set 16 15. Long. Micah gave her hitter a great opportunity to score everybody the blockers were moving to the outside she was moving to the left side and she delivers a perfect set to the right side you got to be able to deliver slay and fuller is blocked by the penn state front row 
play was there. First set was 25-21 USC. Scott. Here's Jupiter. Alex Jupiter. Boy, she's a standout. I think that she's got the potential to be, I, I believe, one of the first players for USC to be a three-time All-American, possibly a four-time All-American. Actually, she's a senior, so she's got the ability to be a three-time All-American. Excuse me. She definitely is showing her abilities here tonight. And that's Katie Slay for Penn State as you get a good look at Alex Jupiter and a good look at Katie Slay. Hit the Lions within one. Jupiter is good again. Yeah. That's a pretty special player right there. That ball is completely out of system. You know, it was not a perfect set. She moves her feet so well. Take a look at the setter's bump setting. She is in rhythm there. She took her first step as Bateman was back setting, back passing the ball and was able to get a good attack. Burnham one more time. Boy, you cannot have two DSs looking at the ball in the backcourt. That's just unacceptable for Russ Rose. He would rather have those two players smashing heads going after the ball. Right now, it's like a deep black hole, and the ball's going in and not coming back out. And that's probably at least part of the discussion as Russ Rose takes a timeout. USC's up a set. USC is leading 2017 in the second. Penn State trying to avoid going down 2-0. USC looking to go 2-0 at Penn State this weekend. There's Mick Haley, the longtime head coach. 11th season at USC, but also Kellogg Community College in Texas. And boy, what a resume for Mick Haley. And you can read all that, but mm. the thing that stands out in my, my mind, super nice guy was on the phone with him and he was in no rush to get off he was yeah. telling me how much he loves to coach and he still loves walking in that gym every day and that his players are fun to be around and they tickle him he said <laughs> they make him laugh they do silly things and he enjoys that fourth hit for usc gives the point to penn state i like what he said after the uh, win against minnesota last night the question from the media was what is something you need to do to beat penn state tomorrow and Mick Haley said, get enough water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another little uh, note about Haley. He was Jim Stone's coach. Really? And Pete Hansen's coach. And Pete Hansen is the head coach of the men's program at Ohio State. Yes. So he has definitely influenced a lot of people and has mentored some great coaches to this day. 2018 USC leading, here comes Jupiter, and Penn State will keep it going. One of our longest rallies of the night. Here's McClendon, that's long. 21-18. I know she's probably getting frustrated with her errors, you know. Usually as an outside hitter, you let those errors go, but I just feel like she feels a lot of pressure to deliver a kill every time, and that's super high expectations. Yeah. A chance for USC. Jupiter. How are you going to stop that? Yeah, well, you know what? They're setting the ball over Micah Hancock, and she's 5'11". She puts up a decent block, but she's certainly not a big enough block to stop Jupiter, take a look at this. Ball's pushed all the way outside. You can clearly see that that ball is going over top of Micah's hands. And so backcourt needs to adjust somehow. They need to read that a little bit better. And just when they start digging line, I bet Jupiter will start ripping it cross court. That's just the type of player she is. That's the 10th kill of the night for Alex Jupiter. Penn State, big eight champions for eight straight years. 
their 14th Big Ten title since joining the conference in the 1991 season. That means 14 conference championships in 20 years for Penn State. And the numbers, another 94 straight wins at home. Yeah, that 109 match win streak ended last year at Illinois. Since 1981, only 10 teams have won an NCAA Division I women's volleyball title. Stanford has six. Penn State has five. USC with three. So great history between these two. The two coaches have won yep. over 2,000 matches in their career. And I will say the thing I respect about Rose is he is such a great teacher of the game. He's able to get top talent into his program, but then from there, boy, does he ever teach the sport of volleyball to these kids. He's also a great motivator, very honest. I think he'll tell you exactly what he thinks. He's not going to mince words. However, I think his players deeply respect that. They know exactly where they stand. He's not going to play any kind of favorites. He'll let you know what yep. you need to do, and if you do it, he's going to like you. <laughs> yep. Tonight's attendance, 6,000. 165. Penn State always well attended at home. Fifth in the nation last year. And the Nittany Lions give their fans something to cheer about as they draw closer, 22-19. Yeah, it was a nice slide to Nia Grant there. Again, the pass made that set possible. Again, you got to get other people involved in the offense. Lighten McClendon's low just a little bit. I mean, she'll come through for you as long as there are some seams for her to hit. If she's got hands all over her, I mean, it's going to make her job really tough. Here's Micah Hancock with the serve. <laughs> Jupiter took something off it, and McClendon and Grant were there to send it back for the point. All right, so they're putting a triple block again on Jupiter, trying to force her to hit a shot around those six hands. So we'll see if they continue to do that. Well, you see Kristen Carpenter really being a vocal leader on the court for Penn State, urging her teammates on. And Mikhail, he's telling Jupiter, you see those hands, you blast off those hands, go high off the top of their hands. Oh, I remember Jim Stone saying that to our outside hitters <laughs> all the time. Good memories. All right, we're going to take a little break. We'll be right back for the conclusion of the second set. USC leading Penn State, 22-20. job. Got a good server on the end line there. It's Micah Hancock. Now her serve has been tough to handle tonight. That time Haglin does for USC. Now Jupiter. It'll... Keep going off the top of the net. Jupiter again. What a dig there by Carpenter, but then put back by Lauren Williams, USC. Well, they're saying that she was over the net when the setter was making an attempt to set the ball. Carpenter made a good dig, but it was a little bit too tight. Let's take a look at it. You see the dig here. It's going to go over the net, and as... The setter is trying to set the ball. You're not allowed to block the setter. Well, the Clinton gets everybody cheering again with that finishing attack. I think that triple block against Jupiter is the way to go, but then from there you got to play good defense around that. And what I liked was Carpenter and the other DS. They had parallel lines on defense. Carpenter cut the ball off, but the other DS went behind. And that's great defense. That's team defense in the backcourt. 12 kills now for McClendon. Here's Jupiter. Carpenter will retrieve it. And sent across by McClendon. Jupiter. Tipped out. Set point USC looking to go up 2-0. And Jupiter. Behind the service line to try and finish it off for the Trojans. It's out. A service ace for USC and the Trojans. First set 25-21, second set 25-21. We'll see if Penn State can regroup in the locker room. Oftentimes, words of wisdom will help, but look at this 
just blasting that serve. Alex Jupiter, again, serve receive being so important. That ball control vital if you want to come back and win a match. Well, again, just like Oregon did last night, USC silencing this crowd of 6,165 at Rec Hall. Now Penn State's not done yet, but they've dug themselves a bit of a hole. USC 25-21, Penn State trailing two sets to none. That's old school right there. Yeah, it is. That's how we used to do it back in the day. <laughs> it's got to be a little warm in there with the long sleeves. But, well, his club's up 2 nothing, so I guess his cheering's paying off. So we're just about set for the third set. See a couple smiles on the Penn State faces. Wonder what trick Russ Rose might have up his sleeve to get his team going here in the third set. Yeah, well, it's good to see some smiles and some positive attitudes. Here's what I think, uh, well, what I'd like to see from Penn State, and I, with that, what I think they need to rebound. I think their right side attack has got to get better. I'd like to see Slay go behind the setter a little bit more, and I'd like for her to get set a little bit more. I think the connection here between uh, Micah Hancock and Katie Slay has to evolve here pretty quickly if they want to win this third set. And here we go with Hancock getting it going for Penn State. Hancock then sets Ariel Scott for the point. And Penn State's off to a good start in the third set. A good, quick tempo set in the middle. I believe that was Nia Grant in the middle. And that's exactly what I want to see. I got to see some middle attackers going up strong and taking big swings at the ball. Now Penn State graduated some big name seniors, six of them in 2010. And there's Grant at the net. Again, the big worry about her was, yeah, she's tall, and Russ Rose knew that she would eventually be a great player, but she's so thin. He wasn't sure that she would be able to have the upper strength to deal with some of these hard hitters and, and her shoulders were going to be strong enough. But right now she's got a heck of a shoulder as she's belting these balls down. Grant's a freshman and 13 of the 17 Penn State players are freshmen and sophomores. And Deja McClendon is one of those sophomores. That cross court shot of hers is as good as you're going to see, folks. She goes up and she moves appropriately. Got, she's got her left hip to the net and then comes through. Nice snap on the ball. Well, Penn State got off to a great start in the first set. USC turned it around and won it. Now Penn State off to a good beginning here in the third one. Cavus will get that point. Now there you go. Yep, I like that right side attack. Cavus coming through that time for her team. Again, you got to score from various places along the net. Hancock, again, gaining the experience, learning that you're not always able to just set it high outside. you got to set an offense. And we're impressed by her jump serve here. Kind of curves across the court, and she takes it from the left side. Micah Hancock, the server, is a freshman from Edmond, Oklahoma. And that'll get the crowd going as Grant gets another one. And she's so excited. She loves contributing to her team. And I have a feeling that Nia Grant has secured a spot in the middle. <laughs> in the last five minutes? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> five nothing, Nittany Lions. That's going to be a USC point. Yeah, Bateman knowing when to dump the ball over again. Two-handed dump. I like those because it looks like you're going to set the quick, and at the last minute, you shift your position, your hand position on the ball. And just a little trick there, a little trickery by Bateman. Yeah. Nick Haley says Kendall Bateman is the quarterback of the operation. Sarah Shaw, a sophomore from Austin, Texas, into the USC lineup. Trojans finally on the board here in the third set. McClendon an elevation there, or what? Yeah, that's a pretty special player right there. When you can pass the ball, shuffle to the outside, and get the kill for your team. So very active. I think 
she's really tried to improve that aspect of her game, serve, receive, and defense. She's worked hard in the offseason. 14th kill of the night for Deja McClendon. Here comes Jupiter. Blocked. Cavus was there, so was Grant, but I think Cavus got it. Now we'll see if Penn State goes back to doing that triple block against Alex Jupiter. And we see that she's got two big hands in front of her. Cavus doing a nice job of sealing the net. Penn State with a great start to the third set, and they need it. The Nittany Lions trail the USC Trojans. Two sets to none, but it's 7-1 Penn State in the third. Set, but I feel like it's because they're going after USC. They're playing much more aggressively. And again, I keep saying it over and over, spreading out that offense and challenging the block. McClendon serving for Penn State. And that'll be a USC point. 7-2 now. A lot of the timeout, the Trojans slow down the Nittany Lions at least for one point. There's the hitting percentages for the third set. And that just went up. Hancock sets up Grant. I think we will be hearing that combination a lot <laughs> in their career. What I like about Nia Grant is that she went up strong. She, she doesn't know if Micah Hancock is going to set her, but she's up ready to go. Get her arm back. Yep. That one's too hot to handle from Jupiter. Yeah, I'm not sure what the answer is to stop Jupiter on the right side. It seems like every time she's there, she gets the set. And every time she gets the set on the right side, she seems to score. 8-3 now. Lauren Williams for USC. Here come the Trojans. 8-4. Another All-American on the floor there. She's able to hold her own in the middle and then some, taking that overpass kill. Serve there by Jupiter. Carpenter does get it across and now a block at the net and USC gets it across on the third hit. Aglin setting. And that's out. Penn State gets the point back. See a little jump setting action yeah. there by Natalie Haglin. We haven't really mentioned her too much although she's had a superb game remember she's the heart and soul of that backcourt she makes everybody so much better that can do attitude of hers she's an accomplished surfer by the way natalie Haglin won the san diego county high school girls longboard surfing <laughs> championships back in the day well that time scott had to come right back to her and that'll be another trojan point there's natalie Haglin, surfing champion well, if you're going to surf, USC is a pretty good place to be. <laughs> yes, it is. I think it's neat when you get to read about some of these kids and their hobbies. Yeah. They're often got some neat things about them that we don't always get to mention. She's also played international volleyball as Natalie Hagland. And some good play at the net, and Penn State will come away with a 10-5 lead. Slay is up there doing her job, which is blocking. Ariel Scott will be in on the action as well. Now, a number of these players for the four teams we've seen this weekend have had international experience. I mean, one of the one of the things you worry about is getting burned out during the college season, but at the same time, a benefit of international play is just the experience of it. Well, absolutely. You get to play at a different pace. You get to play in different arenas. And you get to play with different people, you know. Oftentimes, the ones that you're competing against across the net suddenly become your teammate. And, you know, I think that's kind of a neat thing for these kids. You get to see the world, too. For free. <laughs> and that's the best way to see the world, if you're going to see it. Well, that time, Carpenter couldn't handle the serve. And now Katie Fuller... We'll try it again for the Trojans, who have now crawled right back in it. It was 7-1 Penn State. Now 10-7 Nittany Lions. You can see Penn State with a two-man serve-receive pattern, where Deja McClendon is passing, but passing maybe more short balls there so she can focus on hitting the time. She just whacks the ball out of bounds. She was going for that cross-court shot that she likes so much. Rec Hall, Penn State University, second-ranked USC, 
First ranked Penn State. Audrey Flaw, Jay Wilson with you on Big Ten Network. Now Penn State finally gets something positive on the board, 11-8. Micah Hancock front row, so she goes up and attacks the ball. We haven't seen her do that, a tip attack. We've seen her go up and belt it, which, <laughs> boy, I like, and I think she should do more often. Russ Rose, the NCAA career leader in winning percentage, over 86% of his matches he's won at Penn State. Deja McClendon kill. Allie Longo talking to Deja. Look at team communication over there. Longo getting a dig there, and she really needs to step up her game. She started off as the libero last night. Russ Rose has made some significant changes in that position. So, again, they can play more of those balls. They are giving themselves a chance to transition and score. So they seem to be a little unsure as to how to play different angles and really save the ball. you got to make spectacular plays. Welcome to the coming out party of Kirby Burnham, number five for USC. Got that last kill. 12-9. See if Penn State can answer it. Net violation. That'll be a point for Penn State. Well, the crowd stands and appreciates that effort. You know, it's a serious angle again. I love that cross-court shot of Deja McClendon's. So 13-9 now. Penn State must win the third set to keep this match going. McClendon pushes it across for a point. And again, set up by Hancock. 17 kills now for McClendon. And we have a timeout for USC. And McKaylee's got to find a way of slowing Deja down. He's going to make some adjustments there. Maybe when he does make adjustments blocking, perhaps Russ Rose is talking to Hancock about setting a transition middle attack. She hasn't done that very often. Let's see if that'll work for him. It's Deja McClendon. We're just going to isolate on McClendon for this play. See what happens with number 18. Watch her eyes. Watch her movement shuffling to the outside. Feet haven't stopped moving yet. She takes that set finds a way to score for her team. Again, prior to that, she whacked the ball cross court. So again, when you're an outside hitter, you've got to be able to pull out different shots at different times. Sometimes you got to pull out the right shot at the right time. You don't want to always tip the ball. So she was hitting, hitting, hitting. That set was probably a little bit too tight for her to swing on, but nonetheless finds the area of the court to tip and it lands. And we, we saw how she just glides around the court, mm -hmm. uh, almost floating on air, and then all of a sudden the explosion mm -hmm. well over the net. You know, if you can take your eye off the ball sometimes and just watch the players move, yeah. I think that's a sign of a good player when you're watching younger kids play. You know, are they standing still? Are they flat-footed? Or are they always moving? Whether you're a back row player or front row player, you should always be light on your feet especially those backcourt defenders when the ball is being hit they are constantly moving up to cover they going back and so that movement foot movement is so crucial in order to be a good player both the pac 12 and the big 10 welcoming new schools to their lineups for this year nebraska the 12th team in the big 10 conference three-time national women's volleyball champion 95 2000 2006 and out west, the Pac-12 now with 12 teams as Colorado and Utah have joined the party. 14-10 as USC gets a little closer. Yeah, Kendall Bateman, a great heads-up play there. She was scrambling, didn't quite know what to do with the ball, and then jousts it over. Her aggressive play pays off. Set McClendon again. Now 
USC. That's going to be great hustle by Penn State. Will it go across? Not quite. Point USC. Well, you got to give him credit for that hustle. Carpenter going hard after the ball. What range. Fast foot speed there. Take a look at this again. Oh, Ball's a live watch. How many oh, steps did man. she take to get to that ball? That's great effort. And that was Burnham again for USC making the big hit. And USC with the Bria Russ ace makes it 14-12. You know, it's disappointing because Penn State was working so hard to get the lead, and now they're letting these easy points slip away again. Serve, receive, don't get aced. You, you don't have to necessarily pass a perfect ball, but... Don't let that ball drop without an effort. Russ again. That's going to be just long. Almost dipped in play, but just a little bit past the end line. So service error, Bria Russ, 15-12, Penn State. Third set. More of that communication you talked about earlier, not just verbal, but also hand signals sometimes just a wink and a nod <laughs> yeah get and the job done too often people are like what are they talking about well you see they're talking about where the hitters are how many hitters behind Cabas she's saying how she's going to block that particular hitter so there's constant communication verbal but then nonverbal signals that go on all the time between the hitter and the setter the blockers and the backcourt defense so again crucial to talk in the sport of volleyball service error brings usc to within two and then grant makes it a three-point lead for penn state mia grant a freshman 6-2 from warren ohio A little refreshment on the side now for number seven. And a block in the net. Katie Cavis gets the point. Well, it's nice to see Cavis move and adjust to the set. She's taking a look at where her hitter is lining up. Helps with the middle. That's so important when you're a right side blocker. Occasionally, you got to come in and help with that 31. Fuller's block that time. Cavis and Slay for Penn State. Oh, defense wins. I'm telling you, you got to be able to block and dig a ball if you want to come out victorious in the sport of volleyball. It's so crucial to stop the ball. If you're not going to stop it with a block, slow it down. Again, transition and score. Slay got most of that block, but Cabas now with five blocks for Penn State. Oh, Jupiter gets that one off the block for a point. Now, USC is down by four. It'll be real interesting to see what they do, what their strategy is to get back into this one. Now, if they don't do it quickly, they'll be running out of time because Penn State is only at the 18th point right now, so they got to be aggressive in order to get back into this final, or third set, excuse me. Ariel Scott got that one. 14 Penn State. You know, people often say that blocking is the toughest skill for freshmen to learn, and I think that that is absolutely true. And I think blocking gets better as the season goes on, so you become more disciplined with your hands, and I think that that part of every team's game is going to improve. You know, there's so much movement going on. You've got to be quick with your feet, but then also adjust the movements with your hands. So I think that that'll be an aspect of Penn State's game that Russ Rose will continue to develop, and we'll see that improve. And, and, and why is it so difficult for a freshman to learn that late? Well, the speed of the game when you play high school and club volleyball is so different. The plays are different in college, so I think when most freshmen come into collegiate ball, even if they were good blockers at the high school club level, it's just a different game. The pace is so much faster and they often get tripped up in the movement and following the plays of the, the opposing team's hitter. So oftentimes it's the hardest skill for freshmen to come in and grasp, although I think Katie Slay walked in last year as a freshman with natural blocking instincts. So. 
You know, that's what made her pretty special. Well, I suppose in high school, all these players are so dominant, they, they maybe don't either feel they have to work on it or don't work on a lot of some of the skills to adjust to the college game. But they'll, they'll learn once they get to the university, won't they now? Scott gives USC an opportunity now, and that's put away by Katie Fuller. Out of system kill by Katie Fuller. Again, a good set by a non-setter gives Fuller the opportunity to swing big. She likes to hit cross court. When she is in system, she's got more shots and will definitely hit line, but that time she was showing cross court all the way. Katie Fuller had a little back trouble early in training this year, but uh, looks like she's at full strength based on that last hit. Well, USC kind of watched that one get to the floor, and they were able to escape to keep it in play, but then it didn't work out for the Trojans anyway as Katie Slay will get credit. Okay, a little push here by Penn State would be really nice. They can, again, control the ball, both serve-receive and the first contact. Be great. They're calling out their hitters right now. A block would be so nice. 2017. Out of system. Great save there. That was Hagland. And that'll end up with a Penn State point. Haglin actually slipped on a wet spot in the court. And boy, look for a moment, she might have hurt herself, but I think she'll be okay. But Penn State comes away leading 21-17. Yep, what a spectacular dig by Natalie Haglin. But nonetheless, Penn State got that point. I think McHaley was upset with that net call. That's a beauty by Katie Fuller. Yeah, it's not one of those balls that go straight down with a thump, but it's placed in the right spot. I don't know how you can defend that shot that goes deep in the right back corner. There's just not a way to do that. So, you know, great shot. Yeah. Took a little heat off of it and placed it perfectly. I would say congratulations, Katie Fuller. You got us on that one. And Burnham once again for USC. Kirby Burnham. It's nice that she's getting the opportunity to show what she can do. And as a player, when you get the nod and you get to play, you've got to produce some numbers. And right now she's doing a wonderful job of taking her share of sets on the outside and delivering kills. Again, Kirby Burnham, no kills last night, nine tonight. Hitting at 444 on the night. Also has seven digs in the busy. Penn State led 5-0, 7-1 in the third set, but now it's anybody's set, 21-19. Let's take a look at some of the action from yesterday as Nick Haley gives some instructions to the Trojans. This is USC Minnesota. This was the five-setter that the Gophers Took a 2 nothing lead and then USC rallied. Yeah, Coach Bush was very pleased with the way her team played in the first two sets. She felt like they controlled it and then lost it in the last three. And the one everyone's talking about around the country, Oregon 3-1 over Penn State. Stopping that 94 straight home match winning streak. Yeah, Oregon was hot. Penn State couldn't get a lineup that they liked. And then Whoever Russ Rose plugged in there really wasn't making a significant difference. So we're seeing a different team tonight. I feel like the lineup has remained consistent. I think he likes these people that he's got out there. They're not playing perfectly, but they're playing hard right now in the third set, and they're ahead of USC. Last season, Penn State was 32-5, and five, their fourth consecutive national championship, fifth overall. They have never started a season with two losses. They lost last night. They're down two sets tonight, but they lead the third. Penn State has improved its attacking numbers every set. They need to finish this one to keep things going. Katie Slay. Oh, what a nice save by Micah Hancock. Boy, that was a tight pass, and if I'm not mistaken, I think she did a one-handed set behind her. 
That takes some talent there. Yeah. This kid means business. You don't see that every day now, do you? 22-19. Jupiter off the block. 22-20. Now, if you're USC, she has just rotated in the front row, so that is clearly an advantage. That hot hand of Alex Jupiter. Let's see if she comes through here to tie this up, at least make it close. Penn State's three points away from the set. Carpenter, great play there. That'll go on the USC side. Now two points from the set for the Nittany Lions. Well, good battle at the net. Clearly an unorthodox looking point there, but you got to play the ball wherever it is. And Penn State just nudging it over and then USC all tangled up at the net, wasn't able to get that ball out of the net and play it back over. Haglund flexing her wrist and wiggling her fingers. Hope she wasn't hurt on that last rally. This is who you want at the service line if you're Penn State. She's got a bullet. Micah Hancock, 5'11". He's a freshman. That time Haglund handled the serve. Oh. Whoa, what happened there? I got it, you take it. <laughs> And now Penn State will serve for the third set. Haglin, a no excuses kind of girl, says my bad. She'll take responsibility if that ball drops. Hancock ends it. That was a rocket. And Penn State keeps it going. 25-20, the score of the third set. Well, Micah Hancock, a very impressive athlete. I'm digging this kid. I'm telling you what, she is going to continue to develop. I think she's going to be able to lead the charge for Penn State here in the next set. There you see Haglin. This is the set point. You know, the top spin serve comes at you so fast, and you saw how her arms kind of went away from her body. It's so important to try to move your feet so that the ball is in the midsection of your body, but that time just too fast. USC won the first two sets. Penn State wins the third. We're headed to a fourth set with the Trojans still leading 2-1. Our first match went five sets with Minnesota and Oregon. The Golden Gophers winning 3-2. And now we begin the fourth set with Penn State and USC. Grant, that's too hot to handle for Jupiter. Yep, and they start off with a slide, and that's good. You're mixing things up. You're setting every spot along the net. That's clearly an advantage. So you want to keep doing that. Pass well enough to set the ball and stay in system. And Hancock right back to the service line. Look at that one. But Jupiter, off the dig of Haglin, puts it away. Oh, look at Haglin, wow. Yeah. And set up by Bateman. Yeah, she makes it look so easy. That was a tough, tough serve. You know, she got aced. That's how they lost that set. So I think Haglin being the competitor that she is, she was not going to let that ball drop. That time she was horizontal. And that time, Penn State makes a 2-1 lead. That one just got by Williams. And that was Nia Grant on a quick attack. You see Russ Rose constantly monitoring what his kids are doing. He's jotting down, keeping stats. Service error, Penn State. 2-2. That being marked something down every time. He he? <laughs> Can you imagine how many total career points he's seen? Wow. Yeah. Penn State. What I appreciate about what the coaches do on the bench is they're constantly analyzing the stats. And I think, you know, sometimes you can get mesmerized by plays, but the numbers don't lie. And so the coaching staff on both sides of the net are constantly keeping track of serving and passing stats and the hitting stats and set distribution. I mean, there's a lot of thought that goes behind well, what the coaches are doing on the bench there. Katie Fuller with an easy one there to make it 4-2 USC. Rhea Russ serves, Carpenter handles. 
set was a little off, and now USC tries to recover. Carpenter keeps that one alive. And finding, oh no, I thought it was good, but the play continues, and it's blocked off Tavis for a point for the Trojans. Uh, Carpenter's getting in the ref space. She does not like that call one bit. She is fired up. Still fired up. One more glare. <laughs> And again, Burnham made the play for USC, and another service there. That one from Jupiter. You know, there's a little saying in volleyball that the ball doesn't lie, and oftentimes if there's a, a bad call or possibly a missed call, that the other team would make an error, and so that's exactly what you see. Carpenter was fighting a call, and then USC serving it into the net. Double contact off Haglund. It went off my head, she's saying. I'm allowed to do that. Nobody's happy. Can't we all just get along? Well, you know, it's important to note, too, we were talking about what coaches do on the bench, and they also keep track of what's going on on the other side of the net. So not only are they keeping track of their stats, but also who's hot across the net. That was Lauren Williams from Bateman. That is her best shot. She does a good job of having that lateral step away from the setter and then the two-step approach. So she's really good at movement, getting up, and she's waiting for that ball. She's in the air, and then that set is shot to her. It's her 10th kill of the night. Slay almost double clutched on the shot, but still had plenty left to hit it hard and put it in for a point, 6-5. Boy, you can just see the competitors coming out now and <laughs> I know. two of the best teams in the country. No fooling around from here on in. Oh, they kept it going again. <laughs> A little tight. And that time, Hit across by USC off Slay, and it stayed on the Penn State side, so 7-5 Trojans. Yeah, if you are a non-setter touching the second ball, you want to make sure that you're giving the hitters an opportunity to score. So it's important to keep that ball about five feet off the net when that ball's coming from the back court into the left front or right front area. And a Schreer stuffs that one home. Well, she has had the opportunity to play because Alexis Olgar is still not healthy. So as a freshman, what a heck of a deal. You get to step in and play, and basically there's no one behind you to take your place. So no pressure. Just do your thing and yeah. make your contribution and smile out there and help the team get a victory. Anna Schreer also had her tonsils taken out in May, so she didn't get healthy till the 1st of July. But again, she's another player on the men for USC. Timeout. 9-5 USC leads fourth set. Yeah, yeah, those are pretty straight. special too. National champions. Need bigger rafters. Here we go. 9-5 USC. Trying to get out of University Park with a big win against the number one team in the country. The Nittany Lions aren't done yet. Oh, Jupiter sails it in. Yeah, how do you stop that? A perfect set, leading Jupiter. Great leaping ability again. A good rally here. She digs the ball, gets in good position, explodes up. It's right there, right over top of the block. Again, you would have thought that the blockers for Penn State would have touched or slowed that ball down, but uh, it lands right in the middle back section of Penn State's court. Maddie Martin is in number six for Penn State. Martin, a 6'2 sophomore from Tampa. Slay. That's a big hit from Fuller, handled by Penn State. That was Burnham. Burnham again. time for Burnham and that one is successful off the block a great rally I'm telling you I'm impressed 
by the backcourt play by Alex Jupiter, keeping the ball alive time and time again. And Deja McClendon making some key digs, but that ball goes off of Micah Hancock, and nobody is back there to dig it up. It was a good touch there. There's Kirby Burnham again. Wow, hitting 45%. Go figure. Yeah, well, great contributions she's making tonight. No question. Five straight points for USC. Another good dig by Jupiter. And a big hit from Jupiter. That was off of Carpenter, out of play, and now it's Six straight points for USC, 12-5. Maddie Martin getting inserted as the left side hitter. The set hasn't been perfect, but you gotta take a bad set and you gotta take a rip on the ball. Too many roll shots over the net. And I don't think you're gonna beat USC doing that. Martin. Well, that looked like it was gonna be a Penn State point, but the play continues. Crowd is hooting and hollering, but nothing yet. And Burnham one more time for Kirby Burnham. Up in arms, Russ Rose is up out of his seat. Yeah. Thirteenth kill for Burnham, but that's not the issue right now. Right. The crowd's not very happy. Nope. Neither are the Penn State Nittany Lions. But it's 13-5. And that'll be Maddie Martin getting credit for the point. Let's take a look, look at what happened here. Just one, two. Oh, there's that final kill. I thought we were going to say the see the play that was in question. We're seeing some good swings, like we said, by Kirby Burnham. Yeah. Just a great outside hitter. And now that'll be one for Alex Jupiter as it finds the floor on the Penn State side. And the run continues. Okay, that's... Uh, well, they're saying that that pancake... Uh, that she didn't... Yeah, that, that yeah. 14 lifted the ball, yeah. and then that pancake was a questionable one, too. But, yeah, the, the first contact there by number 14, Hannah Schreer, was the one that was in question. And that's a service error for USC. Penn State now stops that... USC run at seven. 14 7 the score. My goodness. That just takes the air out of it, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, you just got to get back there and serve the ball in court. Again, you're seeing nine service errors there, USC. Almost that many. Yeah. 17 for the game between the two sides. The block. McClendon. Go to Deja McClendon. Well, it's going to be important right now that Penn State builds on this positive play. McClendon's going to be up in the front row for a while there. And it's so important for her to kind of get a few, get her team back in sync. They've got their strongest hitter right now, Micah Hancock, on the end line. Deja McClendon has matched her uniform number with 18 kills. And now here's number eight for USC, Lauren Williams. Very fast arm swing, deceptively fast. She's quick off her feet. And I think her favorite shot, her favorite set to hit is the 31. Time she hit a one ball. Ten kills now for Williams for USC. McClendon answers. Now 16-9 our score. Quiets for the serve. Oh, it's not 
number seven, the freshman, Nia Grant. Good choice by Micah Hancock. Transition middle attack ends up working for Penn State. Building on one positive play. If they can string a couple points together here, it'll be a good sign for Penn State. They fought really hard in that third set and really pulled together as a team. By no means did they play flawlessly. They had their share of errors, but nonetheless, they fought hard, and I think that's what they need to do right now at this point in the fourth set. Now Nia Grant in double figures with her 10th kill tonight. And there's Grant at the net to get another point off the block. And Nia Grant doing a lot of positive things up there. Again, I would be very impressed if I was Russ Rose. You know, she's been able to come off the bench today. I guess she started today. I mean, she didn't start yesterday, so she's taken that starting role that she was given today and has made the most out of it. And USC responds with a point. Katie Fuller. Marika Rasabarskis was serving there for Penn State, number 10. She's a junior. But now USC gets the serve back and a six-point advantage in the fourth set. Jupiter. Boy, Haglin taking up a lot of court space, running down the ball. Let's take a look at that. Boy, oh boy, is that ever special. Hmm. McClendon couldn't get there. <laughs> look at that. Mops up when everything's all done, too. 19 kills now for Alex Jupiter. You know, the... The thing that you have to focus on if you are a DS or libero is you got to take steps to the ball. You cannot just drop before you play the ball. So that's what Haglin does so well, her foot speed to the ball. She keeps going and going and going until she plays it, never gives up on it. Maddie Martin will get a point out of that for Penn State. And the lead again is six. Kristen Carpenter to serve for Penn State. Fuller's blocked. USC will get it back across. Katie Slay. Hey, well, Penn State took a free ball that USC gave them. It's like a gift offensively. You're in system, and that time Slay stepped away from the setter, opening things up for her, and it was a nice set. It was set far enough away from the net that she had some angles to hit. Quick set for Williams. Slay gets the point back for Penn State. All right, so they're doing what I asked them to do, stringing some points together, really putting some pressure on USC to make good plays, and USC just hasn't been able to do that. So Penn State feeling real good about what they're looking like right now in the fourth set. Now the Nittany Lions showing some moxie. They're hanging in, 18-14. USC leads, though, fourth set. There's that free ball, and you're in system. Whack. Oh, it's past your bedtime, young lady. <laughs> oh, no, you know what? It's on the on the West Coast. It's not that bad. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. <laughs> USC led 16-8, fourth set, but now Penn State has scored seven in the last nine, and they are within three, 18-15. Well, Katie Fuller for USC was hot. Now she's getting blocked, so Penn State's getting in her head a little bit. She's struggling to score. Burnham! Goodness. You know, it's interesting to see Burnham. She keeps swinging across court. You almost want to tell Penn State's right side blocker, Katie Cavis, to move the block a little bit, see if she can hit a line shot. You know, perhaps she can, but we haven't seen her do much of that. Kirby Burnham's a sophomore, but she has made big plays all night tonight. That was a big play from Katie Slay for Penn State. Yeah, you feel like Katie Slay's getting into a rhythm, don't you? Yeah. She's kind of making herself more available to be set, and that is so important. And I notice that she's talking as she's going up, so 
That's a great verbal cue if you can chat with your setter as you're moving. She knows where you are even if she can't quite see you. Slays up to 11 kills now for Penn State. And the left-hander gets it in. That's Micah Hancock. And the kids are talking about how, yeah. how the heck did you do that? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, let's Here's how. Starts with a good pass, and then boy, a snap. Wow. And again, if you are a left side blocker and you've got that center that likes to swing, you got to take a strong shot away. That's a shot to the right back corner. Looky here, here come the Nittany Lions. They're within one. them up but right now she's slamming them down this is great stuff 19 apiece Woo! that had some smoke on it yeah. katie fuller fuller needed to come through for usc again she was getting blocked glad to see that she had the courage to go up strong and not be intimidated by a block so penn state got it to 19 19 but now that Smashed by Fuller as the Trojans ahead by one. Uh oh. Wow. Tell me how that one fell in. <laughs> now that's good for Penn State, 2020. Yeah, it didn't start off looking too good. <laughs> yeah. But Deja McClendon, just a nice roll shot. I guess sometimes you just think Natalie Haglund's going to get them all in the back yeah. court, but that was actually closer to the right side of the court. And Martin just missed with that serve. 21 20 USC. Four points from the match of the Trojans. Serve received so crucial at this point of the game. You want to make sure that you're taking care of business on the first contact. McClendon puts it away on the set from Hancock. Oh, there's a pair, huh? Hancock and McClendon. All right, so it's a game to four. We were in a similar situation last night. Game to four. Forget about everything that has happened if you're Penn State. You just have to beat them four points. Well, that was Alex Jupiter. We're in an interesting place in the rotation for both teams. You've got McClendon on one side, the left side, and you've got Jupiter on the other side. So it's going to be a real battle here. Jupiter now with 20 kills. USC, or make that Penn State, had the lead way back at 2-1. to one. They've tied it a couple of times late here in the fourth set. But each time, USC has responded. Now McHaley takes issue. Doesn't seem real pleased with the outcome, does he? Uh, apparently he wanted to rotate a certain way, but he was denied in his request. Okay. 22-21. 22-22. Yeah, Brea Russ went after it. She wasn't holding anything back. Serve, so she was going for a winner. I can just Again, see yeah. everybody's head to Man, how much longer could this go on? Service errors now 19 between the two teams. Really becoming an advantage for Penn State in these 
most recent sets. They won the third set, Penn State 25-20, and now they've finally taken the lead 23-22. Now it's Haglin rolling around. Great effort, but give the point to Deja McClendon. Yeah, I mean, these balls are coming at the defense so quickly. Not only does Haglin want to dig the ball, but she's got to dig it off the net. And that time, it was a little too yeah. tight for her setter to handle. You see Kristen Carpenter? She get, oh, her she eyes vocal. were on yeah. fire. Yeah. As we said, four straight national championships for Penn State. Could they possibly get a fifth? Well, there's 07, 08, <laughs> 2009, 2010. You see everyone holding up four fingers. Right. This year it's one for the thumb, huh? <laughs> Finals in San Antonio, I believe. Yes. We'll see if. The Nittany Lions and maybe even the Trojans and maybe the Gophers and maybe the Ducks make their way to the national finals in San Antonio, Texas. Now this is who you want to have serving if you're a Penn State fan. She's got a wicked jump serve. Penn State point. They're one away from the set. Well, isn't this interesting? <laughs> Penn State hanging tough. They play hard. Good things happen. And it all starts from an aggressive serve, getting a team out of system. This place is electric. Hancock to serve for the set to force a fifth. They block Jupiter. We're going the distance. <laughs> Kids these days, I'm my telling goodness. You what, <laughs> Jupiter has been on fire all night and then gets roofed by Penn Woo. State. My goodness. Okay, here's the point that got Penn State to game five to the fifth set. Okay, short break, then back with the fifth set. Penn State stays alive, winning the fourth, 25-22. We'll see who takes the match right after this. Not too many fans have left, have they? Oh, gosh, no. I think, though, seeing Carpenter act like that was such a good thing to see in a player, you know, just relaxed in this uh, pretty intense match. So, USC will see what it's made of on the road in a hostile environment after winning the first two sets. Again, the attendance tonight, over 6,000 fans at Rec Hall. And I'll tell you what I really liked about Penn State in that last set is they just showed a lot of fight. You know, it wasn't perfect, and you don't have to play perfect in order to win matches. you got to come together as a team. And the other thing I like is I think they're settling in with this lineup. Carpenter seems to be more comfortable wearing the libero shirt. Megan, or I'm sorry, Mika Hancock is doing a great job of varying the attack, and they're passing well enough to do that. So, you know, it's a game to 15. It comes at you pretty quickly. This is anybody's match. Maybe the Giant has awakened the sleeping Giant at Penn State. Gets off to a good start as Hancock serve cannot be returned. 1-0. Yep, and then why not rotate the lineup a little bit and let her serve first? You know, she is heating it up from the end line there. And so she gets a whack at it, gets to serve first. What a night for Micah Hancock. 2-0 Penn State. That was Grant. Serving aggressively is so important. USC feeling a little off balance now. They're making some adjustments. Plugging in new people in that serve-receive pattern, trying to slow the rhythm of Hancock.
seeing here this good Man, volleyball. This great stuff. Yep. McClendon! Found a seam and nailed it. Yeah, this is more of the traditional Penn State volleyball that we're used to seeing. Some great digs in the backcourt. Then finishing it off just superbly there by the hand of Deja McClendon. Oh, she stepped over the line. She stepped over the line on the serve. Three one. Well, that's unfortunate. And she's shaken that one off. She was on a nice roll, putting all kinds of pressure on the serve-receive game of USC. A lot of these players have anything left, either emotionally or physically. But they do. Oh, yeah. Nice dig. And a free shot for the Clinton, and she doesn't miss it. 24 kills for the sophomore from Louisville. Take a look at this sprawling dig. There's Ali Longo in the backcourt, and then another good dig by USC, oh. but whoa, that's big time slurp, inside the 10 foot line. Yes. <laughs> Give me some Yummy. More. <laughs> and again, they get a block on Alex Jupiter. Katie Cavas, time out. Ten blocks for Cavas. Penn State with the lead, 5-1, fifth set. Can the Nittany Lions come off the deck and get their first win of the season? Go we'll find out. Even the band is weary. They've had to play tunes all night. Here we go. <laughs> Back row player McClendon, and that'll be a USC point, 5-2. You know, you got to believe that a two-time All-American has the composure and the toughness. I know she's gotten blocked here, and she wasn't really getting blocked very much in the previous sets that she is going to come back and fight for her team. It's Maddie Martin, the big swing. Now Jupiter gets another try, but she missed it long. USC certainly giving Penn State the opportunity to win this fifth set, making all kinds of unforced errors. So we'll just see if Penn State's able to capitalize and take control. That's going to be a point for the Nittany Lions. And it's 7-2. It's all Penn State here. Carpenter now serves. Jupiter hits it long. Boy, these are very unusual yeah. hitting errors for Jupiter. The things we haven't seen her do. We haven't seen her hit those kind of shots all night tonight, and we didn't see any of that last night yeah. either from her. So kind of unusual errors on her behalf. Eighth point of the fifth set, so we'll switch sides. And when we resume, it'll be Penn State serving, leading at 8-2. Fans are having a lot of fun. Jupiter has had 10 attack errors this evening, and those last two were really uncharacteristic. Yeah, bad errors at bad time. There's Fuller. And there's Cavus putting it away. Well, Carpenter was fortunate that she blocked it off her chest out of the other side of the net, and then Cabas was able to get the finish. And she's made some key plays on the right side. Again, everybody has to contribute, do your little job, and then some. That's going to be off the net and a Penn State point. They've got 10. Well, if USC can come back, that would be an upset. I'm telling you what, Penn State is in the driver's yeah. seat right now. Jupiter missed 
missed it again. Yeah. It's kind of scary, isn't it, to see a team play so well and then yeah. so poorly. Yeah. Isn't that something? It turned around quickly, didn't it? It's frightening if you're a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, and I'll tell you what, I think the switch has been flipped for Penn State. Now well, that time Jupiter did find a good location, 11-3. And the USC is going to have to play without many errors. <laughs> Mikhail is like, yeah, I've been here a while. Can we get It's darn near 11-30. Jupiter has to the backcourt, obviously, she's there serving. Oh, beautiful set from yep. Bateman to Warren Williams. Yes. Worked well all yep. night together. Yeah, quickly taking care of that ball, and it's interesting to see Jupiter's now in the backcourt if she'll have more luck. You know, hitting because the block won't be right in front of her, it won't be a typical looking set. trying to crawl back in this fifth set. Still a bit of a mountain to climb, 11-5. Oh, and they got it across. Yeah. Ooh, I tell you, Katie Fuller has had some hits tonight. Yes, she has. Too many tips, too many easy shots. In that particular rally from Penn State, you have an opportunity to score. You've got to put it away. Seven kills for Fuller, and they've all been noisy ones. The Penn State crowd trying to will the Nittany Lions to this victory. They're on their feet. Just couldn't control it. Yeah, a little hesitation on her part. Again, Haglund keeps the ball alive. Didn't go right to Bateman. Bateman had to move for it. Not a great save. Oh, boy, that kid can play. Hancock, what a wonderful save on her side of the net. This has been fantastic. 12-6 Penn State. Bateman. Fuller blocked by Scott. And Fuller comes right back. Well, I have been so impressed with how well these teams cover the hitter. You know, these blocks, I mean, it ricochets off the blocker's hands and off of them so quickly. And those instincts, they just yeah. go. They don't even think about it. And it's even a lot of plays those DSs are in the backcourt. Never give up on a point. Either side. 12-7, fifth set. Penn State three points away from the match. Ooh, that was Maddie Martin. Uh, she needed to get one. <laughs> she got it at the right time. Swung big on the left side. Again, a nice set from the non-setter, so to speak. Yeah. The libero, who's been setting for Penn State for the past year. Now wearing the libero shirt, nicely delivered. Two points for the match, Penn State. Mm. Gotta go over. But it did. USC gets the point. Now Katie Slay running after that ball, trying to do the best she could with it, but it got knocked out of bounds. Let me tell you what, 
Miss Hancock, you got a fan in me. I always enjoy watching good setters. And kiddo, you're my kind of player. Okay, make that two. Make that 6,165. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm not the only person saying that. I know it. This is match point for Penn State. They proved a lot of things to Coach Rose tonight. Boy, it, it wasn't a national championship, but it sure looks like <laughs> it by that crowd. Absolutely. It felt like it, too. And USC, after winning the first two sets, boy, they were looking at a magical weekend. Coming from behind to beat Minnesota last night and playing number one Penn State toe-to-toe -to -toe at Rec Hall. But give credit to the Nittany Lions. Boy, that's a big win for the Big Ten. Yeah, playing the best seems to bring out the best in players, and that's certainly what we saw tonight. Great effort. Penn State doing a remarkable job of bouncing back, and I think there is a consistent lineup now that Russ Rose can go with. I think people were shining in spots, and there were some areas of concern last night. Well, those areas were, you know, a little bit better tonight. Good enough to beat the number two team, so... Here's the worst kept secret of our oh, broadcast, that? the performance of the match. The performance of the match is brought to you by Pure Silk Shave Cream. And she's a favorite of the broadcast team tonight and of all the Penn State Nittany Lions fans. Micah Hancock, a freshman, but the performance of the match. Yeah, not only was she the quarterback, did a good job of learning as she went on to vary the offense, but the serve that she let loose from the end line definitely helped her team with this win tonight. She went back and ripped the ball, got some key points there to start off the fifth set. Russ Rose walks off the court with one of his more thrilling victories. He had a over a thousand, oh boy, how about that? Two legends yeah. of volleyball coaching. Great respect for each other and even a wry smile from Mick Haley. But all oh, the stories those two could tell. <laughs> what a great night. Penn State down two sets to none. Rallies to win it over USC. Three sets to two.